All right, so let's let's move on to case two. Speaking of PDL one, uh, let's let's talk about a case uh, a PDL one positive EGFR mutated lung cancer. Um, so this is a 70 year old female woman. She presents to her PCP with ongoing uh, nausea, fatigue, and sporadic head headaches. Uh, she has a past medical history of hypertension and hyperlipidemia, but no smoking history. Um, on physical exam, uh, she has a moderately elevated blood pressure, 155 over 70, and uh, auscultation reveals decreased breast sounds at the right lower lobe. Um, her blood work is essentially unremarkable, and she gets an imaging uh, of a, she gets CT chest, abdomen, pelvis that reveals a 3.8 centimeter mass in the right lower lobe. She also has a 1.5 centimeter uh, adrenal uh, met that's confirmed on PET scan. Uh, an MRI of her brain is, is negative. Um, she gets a CT guided biopsy of the lung lesion that shows a, a grade two adenocarcinoma, astenar pattern. Uh, her PDL1 TPS is 70%, uh, and her molecular testing is, a, uh, is sent out um, and is uh, EGFR exon 19. Uh, her final staging is a T2A N0 M1B, uh, so she's a stage four, uh, and she's an ECOG1. So we've got an interesting case here, and this is really one that we see a lot in, in, in tumor boards. A, a patient who's presenting relatively fit, never smoker with oligometastatic disease, just two sites of disease, who is both EGFR positive and PDL1 positive. Um, so the management of patients with oligometastatic disease has altered over the past few years, and I think we're starting to think of things a little bit differently now and how they should be managed. And I'll, and I'll ask Mickey and Anshu first as radiation, as surgeon and radiation oncologist, you know, the potential role for aggressive management. This is a patient again, and let's just put aside the PDL1 and the EGFR right now. Uh, the potential role of, of, of metastatectomies or, or aggressive management of these, of these areas and dare, for, dare I say, cure for a patient with stage four, although that's uh, unlikely, this is where we're trying to head. So Mickey, you wanna start just uh, some, some approaches from a thoracic surgery standpoint? For sure, for sure. Um, the one thing I probably should mention is the change in the M staging that occurred with the eighth edition of the AJCC where M1A is really our pleural pericardial disease or a, a MET in the other lung a satellite nodule, and M1B is this monometastatic, you know, we always use the word oligo, oligo means few. You know, this is really a monometastatic lesion, right? And then M1C is either multiple, uh, multiple organs involved or multiple METs in one organ, which is a little different here. So this is definitely a, a, a 1B, which I see several a year. Um, historically, we know these patients, if they're node, mediastinal node positive, do poorly. So I think we really need to invasively make sure the mediastinum is okay. EBUS is my preferred route. Agreed. Um, and then I think you really talk with, uh, and I'm, I'm a surgeon, so uh, to typically I would probably have the adrenal gland removed first. If it was a brain met, have that either removed or treated with radiation. But from the adrenal, usually we have a laparoscopic surgeon removes that and then probably give them chemo and then do the lobectomy because if they're gonna met out, then I don't wanna do a wasted operation. So that's my, there's no algorithm for the NCCN guidelines, but that's my personal bias. Yeah. Anshu, your thoughts? I mean, I think, again, you bring up some important points, the timing of all this. Is it chemo first? And then if they don't met out, address each one. Is it address one, then chemo, and then address the, the, the lung? Or do you just give them chemo or just a TKI? Because this patient, as you recall, is EGFR positive. This is a, this is a, we're in no man's land in terms of how to best manage these patients, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great case. And I, and I agree with Mickey. I think that you, you kind of have to approach um, disease states, whether they're solitary METs versus all of the metastatic disease, a little bit differently. And that's kind of how we do it in our practice. If they're coming into our, in our clinic with a solitary metastasis, we will typically recommend upfront management of the, of the MET, whether it be, and, and I would, also favor kind of a minimally invasive surgical technique here. You get tissue um, and you deal with the metastasis as well. But I think if you're starting to think about an oligomet state um, up front, um, sometimes in those cases we would think about managing the thoracic disease up front uh, as a possibility because we are also concerned that they might they might met out or or kind of going straight to systemic therapy as a frontline option. Um, we have had cases in which we have dealt with the thoracic disease up front in the solitary met state, but those are typically cases 
cases um, where they've been non-brain mets. Um, so there might be a, um, a, a liver met or, or something of that nature. Um, and in many ways, we're kind of treating the thoracic disease to give it a chance to show itself. You know, perhaps these patients will develop greater amount of metastatic disease, in which case the, the management after addressing the thoracic disease may change. Yeah, I, and I think a lot of this is also, and I told you guys unfairly to ignore the EGFR and PDL one as you're having these comments, but much of this is contingent on the molecular underpinnings, and this patient has an EGFR mutation. Maybe you do start out with a TKI and see how things go, and then if everything looks good, then address each spot. I don't think we have the timing sorted out here.